Hey, good morning everybody, West Coast Johnny. Thanks for stopping by. I'm making a uh, spacer for my fantastic fan for the top of my Scamp trailer. As most of you probably know who've installed one of these in a fiberglass egg type trailer, you need to create some kind of a spacer to lift it up or you can just drop it in into the your living space about uh, three quarters of an inch or so. And I didn't want to do that, I wanted it to go up. Well, I noticed, you know, I got a round trailer and I got the round dome of the fan kit and I wanted everything just to kind of flow. Well, ever since I've been younger, uh, I've been in, into Ed Roth. So here's one of his old t-shirts. And that's a motorcycle inspired, like he did the Rat Fink creation and stuff. Well, he was also known as the king of custom culture. And I got this book. Okay, I've had this since I was younger, and uh, I read it many times. This guy was amazing, and I thought to myself, you know what, if Ed Roth was alive today, and he had to make a space for his camp trailer, how would he do it? What would it look like? Well, I know exactly what it would look like. Follow me. Okay, well, I already removed the vent, and uh, originally, in 1978, and maybe most models, the older ones, the vent openings were 9 and 5 eighths. See that? Okay, so we got 9 and 5 eighths square. It's a square 9 and 5 eighths opening. Um, and it needs to be 14 inches, so we're going to go ahead and measure that right now. Here's our 14 inches by 14 inches. So, as you can see, this needs to get cut out. And this needs to get cut out, but we're going to keep this, okay? We're keeping this. So, let me show you the inside. All right, well, what I'm going to use up there to cut the fiberglass is a four and a half inch grinder that I bought, I think it was $39 at Harbor Freight. Um, I got some little packages of these four and a half inch cutting discs, 16th of an inch abrasive discs. I think that little package was like five bucks. Now I do have a Milwaukee, one of these grinders, but I don't want to use it um, because this works great. And if I get fiberglass dust and things internally, you know, that's okay. I mean, these things, believe it or not, actually you can get a years out of one of these for $39 if you just you just got to be careful not to drop it because a lot of times when you drop these kind of things they get little cracks and then they're ruined so um, if you've never used one of these seriously please don't feel apprehensive to uh, cut the fiberglass yourself because um if for one it's it's really thin it's not that hard if you look Look how thin that is. It's not hard at all. If you ever cut a piece of wood with a circular saw or, you know, drill the hole with a, with a drill and you had to have a kind of a steady hand, it's really no different than using one of these. So here's what's going to happen. This is the kitchen cabinet, right? Pretend it's, it's not installed right now. That's why it's here. But pretend we're up on the roof. We're going to go like this. We're going to turn on the saw and we're going to be wearing our glasses and our um, a mask because we don't want to breathe in the dust. Now, if pretend this is on the tool, all we're going to do, we're going to, you don't want to come down on a corner like this, like come down. It's not going to work. You got to plunge down, go back right to your line. Then you're going to go forward to your line, stop, come up, plunge down, go back a little bit right to your corner, come over like this. Stop, pull up. Okay, there's our 14 inch square opening. And here's the piece that got cut off, see? It's pretty thin, it wasn't even that hard. 
So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in and just see how it fits from above. All right, well, here's our fan. I dropped it down. You can see it's uh, nice and flush and it's going to um, fit really nice. The only thing I had to do is I had to raise the, the fan itself up seven eighths of an inch thick so that, uh, cause that's how thick this fan is. And it was, it was coming down when it comes down Either you could put some trim around the inside or just raise it. And I decided to raise it because I want to use this flange that it comes with. I just got to cut most of this off. I leave about a quarter of an inch. You'll see. I'm going to do it and I'll show you. And it's going to fit up in there. It's going to cover everything. All right. Well, I, I got this supported and I've marked it where it needs to be cut all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting it with my little disc grinder. Well, here's the old piece that I cut out. This was the roof. You can see where the uh, old the old vent was. And here's the fiberglass on the inside under the elephant skin. So if you can imagine, it looked kind of like this before. There was the old, the old hole in the fiberglass. And now it's just this much bigger for the vent. Okay. So that, it's only that uh, thin too. It's, it's pretty thin stuff. So um, it wasn't really too hard to cut. Um, if you don't want to use the four and a half inch grinder, you know, maybe you can use a little saber saw or something, but that's just what I used. And I went ahead and I have a piece of plywood. So I made my, um, it's exactly three quarters of an inch. This is leftover marine plywood I had from when I replaced my floor in the scan. So I'm gonna put this up on the roof and show you how it fits. Okay, up on the roof, I went ahead and I ground away some of the gel coat because what we're gonna do, we're gonna fiberglass our spacer in. And the reason we're gonna fiberglass it in place is because, well, we never want it to leak. And that's really the absolute best thing you could possibly do. It's better than any caulking or beetle tape. Is if you can fiberglass this to here, it's not hard. I'm going to show you how I do it. Also, see how the, the roof is curved, but the wood is not. See that? So my three quarter inch marine plywood spacer I made, it's going to sit on the roof just like this. Then my fantastic fan kit, it sits right inside. Just like this. See that? So. The garnish mold will go on the inside and screw into here. From the top, see there's 16 holes. Okay, well that's how it's gonna fit. See that? So all it does, it just raises the fan, the fan itself is gonna get raised up three quarters of an inch. Okay, well I went ahead and I got this so it will not move. What I did from underneath, I just, drilled like four little holes on each side and I put these tiny little screws from the underside to kind of suck this down so it's really flat see now that it's it's a lot flatter and it's, it can't move I'm going to go ahead and fiberglass it in place And see what I'm doing? I'm building it up so that um, it's just kind of going to be contoured all around.
Okay, well, I went ahead and finished the fiberglassing. I rolled the scamp out into the direct sunlight and I'm covering it with plastic. I'm creating what's known as a hot box environment on the fiberglass work that we just did. Let me show you. Fiberglass work is in there. It's, um, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's already been, it's, you know, it already hardened and stuff. However, by covering it in plastic, this trick is really gonna help the hardening process. I'm gonna leave this plastic on until tomorrow. So it's gonna sit like this for a few more hours. And there's, you know, like I said, there's plastic underneath, there's plastic on top. This is really tight around the sides so air can't get in. And it's just gonna really kind of bake. And it's gonna just really, really help the hardening process. I wanna say this. When you're using any kind of body filler, I've said this before, here's what you wanna do. You wanna go down to your local body shop supply house and buy some lightweight filler. You don't wanna go to your nearest auto supply store like um, O'Reilly's or Pet Boys or something and buy Bondo. That's the last thing you ever wanna put on something that flexes is Bondo. It's gonna crack. This will not crack. I've seen people call this Bondo the same stuff on YouTube and I've seen people write the word Bondo out and they're using this and uh, you know Bondo is just a brand name and it's not even really uh, meant for fiberglass. The, okay this is what you want. It won't crack. Cream hardeners too okay. Um, we're gonna get up on the roof and we're gonna put our first coat of uh, filler around that new opening. Okay, I got the first coat of our filler on. See that? So I'm just kind of making like a swoop and it's gonna go all around. And then uh, it's gonna take several passes. It, you can't do it all at once because it'll harden so much. So. Anyways, that's this consistent color you want to look. I just put it on and it's already it's already kicked up. That's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up another batch. All right. Well, I went ahead and I sanded the body filler and it's starting to take shape. See that? So um, tomorrow, it's starting to get kind of cold out. Tomorrow I'm gonna put a second coat on and then maybe I'll finish it with, with some finishing putty, which will be our final, um, it's like a glaze coat, real thin, refined, uh, real smooth, smooth body filler. It just for like minute imperfections. So we're gonna see how this looks in the morning and we're gonna continue with our Ed Roth little roof opening all right well i'm gonna get up on the roof and i'm gonna primer our body work that we did let's take a look at it really smooth and contoured okay let's hit it with some primer All right, well, I just primed it and I wanna show you my Ed Roth inspired custom 1960s molded look. And all that is, is just a spacer for my fantastic fan, but doesn't that just give it a cool custom look? Wow, okay, well, I'm pleased. And if you guys wanna do anything like this, hey, it wasn't hard, you know, it was just a, I built it up with fiberglass, many layers, and then a little bit of uh, lightweight body filler. And then at the end, I just used some uh, of the glazing putty for some of the very minute imperfections. Right now it looks funny because there's a shadow over there, but it's all finished. Whatever you guys are working on, if you're working on a casita or a bowler or a trillium or a, you name it. I wanna see your project. I wanna hear about it. Leave me a comment. Okay, 
Take care. Thanks for joining today. Thank you.